well and it's definitely been a hot minute since I sat down and filmed a video to put it out on YouTube but this semester honestly has been so crazy and so busy but I'm glad to be back if at least just for this video who knows if I will get around to other videos and content honestly looking back on last year and the amount of videos and projects that I put out I literally have no clue how any of that was possible and how I put out at least one or more videos every month because this year I don't even have time or motivation to even sit down to sew anything um but that's just how life has been honestly so if you're new to my channel welcome my name is madison i'm a high school fashion design teacher by day and i used to say youtuber um by night and by weekend but honestly that is not the story of my life right now but i'm currently on the break from school so i thought it was perfect time for me to sit down and film a video um but also it's a video that i've had in the works over the last two weeks at school for our fashion history unit. I'm excited to finally be putting out this video. So if you've been following me since about last fall, um, you probably saw my video from last year called Time Traveling Fashion. And so kind of the gist of that is I started teaching fashion design three years ago. So last year when I was teaching my fashion history unit and fashion design too, I decided that I was going to dress up in historical costumes every day for our unit to just bring a little bit of excitement um, to our lessons, be a little bit quirky. Um, and also I wanted an excuse to wear all of my historical costumes that I had made the year before. And so I decided that I was going to do that exact same thing this year. Um, of course, me being absolutely ridiculous and trying to do way too much decided that I didn't want to rewear my costumes from the year before that I somehow needed to make all brand new costumes um for this hash fashion history unit which thankfully i took that pressure off myself that i did not have to make all brand new costumes um i made like one or two new ones that i got to wear um and there were other ones that i wanted to get to but just didn't happen and i actually filmed the process of creating two of those so maybe at some point we'll put that vlog out of just the behind the scenes of sewing two of these costumes um, but I decided to dress up in costume again this year and it was so much fun and this year I kind of reworked my fashion history unit so that it actually took us two weeks to get through it rather than just one week and so I actually had two whole weeks of dressing up in historical costumes the first week was BC era history all the way to like the 1800s and then the second week was all of the 1900s fashion and so I actually dressed up in 1900s fashion the second week like the 1920s 1940s 1960s 70s and um 90s i think is what i ended up dressing up as for all of those different days so that was super fun um so i actually have way more outfits to show you this year for my time traveling fashion um for fashion history and so i took videos and kind of mini vlogged every single day that i dressed up which was super fun um i love dressing up in historical costumes because i've always loved dressing up since i was a little girl and so to be able to dress up and just bring the real life of fashion history to my students in class um whether they like it or not honestly i dress up crazy every single day so at this point they're not even phased um it's just super fun to kind of quiz them okay what time period do you think we're studying today based on what i'm wearing or to be able to talk about facets of my outfit as we are actually studying and talking about that time period of history so um we study bc era time periods all the way up into the 2000s so it was a lot of fun so without further ado, here is what I wore every day to class. So today is day one of our 2021 fashion history unit. And this year I wanted to create all new costumes for all of our fashion history days. And I ran out of time, so I decided on day one, we're just going to be someone who is wearing traditional Greek or Roman, um, a Greek or Roman garment, which basically just means draping a sheet over yourself. And I'm honestly loving this style. It was so easy to put together and it was super fun um, to show my students the traditional garments that were worn by people and the greek and roma era greek and roman era during the bc era time periods and then we also had them play around with creating their own togas and then uh chitons which is what i'm wearing today so i'll take you into the fashion closet to show you what this whole look is like all right so this is what we are wearing today this would typically be called a chiton 
or Chiton, C-H-I-T-O-N. It was traditionally worn by more of people who lived in Rome over those who lived in Greece. Um, people who were in Greece would typically wear the toga, but they would also um, be known to wear the Chiton, which was a lot looser and freer flowing. And so there were different kinds of them. And this is the one that I'm wearing today. You basically take a sheet of fabric you fold over the top part usually the top part hits right here so you have more of like a ruffle but my sheet's super long so we kind of have this double ended thing this side is folded obviously so you just kind of have this loose thing that lays right here um you can create the neck to be like a cowl neck and then this side would have been the side that would have been open um you pin it closed a little bit and then it drapes along this side so you can wear it with or without the belt obviously the belt kind of brings the whole look together um so this is just a sheet that i got at a local thrift store and it worked well for today because we literally did not have to sew anything and we were also talking about the bc era and this is traditional garments that they wore so super fun for my hair because we always have to try and make our hair as historically accurate as possible um so they use a lot of hair adornments and they would typically wear it up um or wear it somewhat wavy they use a lot of gold in their hair so i have this like gold um adorned ribbon that i cut off of a dress that i redid a while back and i just crimped my hair and then clipped my hair over the piece to kind of give that grecian goddess ish look but that's not what i'm trying to go for i'm just trying to look like a roman citizen um and so yeah i am honestly such a fan of this <laughs> This is like my new favorite historical costume. It's so comfortable, so fun. Oh, and then shoes wise, we are wearing these lace up black sandals that I've had forever because they always wore some type of lace up sandals. We always wanna make sure we're historically accurate from head to toe. Um, and then this is the back of it a little bit. So this is today, tomorrow is AD. Um, so BC stands for before Christ and the timetable of history and historical events. AD is Anno Domino, which means um, in the day of our Lord. And so tomorrow is more like medieval, bronze age, all that stuff. Um, and we're going to wear a very traditional, like old medieval time period look. Then Wednesday, we are going to be doing 1800s like Pride and Prejudice. Uh, Thursday we're going to be doing like 1860 Civil War and then Friday we are skipping all the way to the 1920s. Um, so here is day one of fashion history this year. All right so that is a wrap on day two of all my classes. So we just finished all my classes for Tuesday but today was day two of fashion history. I decided this year that I was going to break up all the different time periods of history by day instead of trying to cover multiples in one day. So yesterday was BC, today was AD, um, partly, and then we also got into like medieval renaissance. And then tomorrow we're gonna do 17 and 1800s, and then we are going to cover the rest, the rest of the week. So today I was planning on wearing this new, a very like early middle ages, kind of dark ages um, gown that's just all brown. It kind of looks like it's made out of like a linen fabric, even though it's synthetic with this over um part that's i think called like a surcoat i'm literally gonna forget all the names to all these pieces right now but do not finish it in time because life is crazy so i decided to bust out my 1500s gown that i wore last year the cool thing about this is though it has these detachable like poofy sleeves so the poofy sleeves were really big in like the 15 and early 1800s uh, but they're detachable on this so i decided to change it up today i was going to do a different hairstyle which is this one today um and then take off my sleeves to make it more of like an everyday dress um kind of a more common look so i'll show you what that is and it took this dress out of today plus i just love how this dress fits it's so fun all right so this is the look for today i still love this whole silhouette so um because i wanted to change it up and i didn't have time to finish my early middle ages like dark ages very renaissancey dress um this one is definitely a lot more fancy again it's more from like the 1500s than like the 12 1300s so usually this has these giant poofy sleeves if you go watch my video from last year you'll see that 
but I detached them for today and wore them over the same gauzy top which would have been something very similar to what they wore back then um, and then everything else is the same so it kind of brought the look a little bit more simple every day more kind of working class um, and then I decided to wear my hair down because they did wear their hair down um, in those time periods although there were a lot of hats I just haven't made all the hats yet last year I wore like a headband and then did like this twisty braid so this year I put my hair in little braids with um, these pieces of fabric or ribbon and then I just draped them across my head to give me a little bit of like a headband um, which you saw a lot of those kind of techniques used back then so this is the bodice I love this bodice it has a little bit of boning and then the back looks really great so it goes all the way up the back and then the great thing about this gown is that it has this fabulous little train which I've definitely been tripping over all today but it looks super cool and then this is actually an overdress that's worn over this skirt that I use for both my 1500s this look and my 1700s look so it's a very versatile skirt for a lot of my historical fashion and so this is the whole look if you've ever seen the movie ever after I was definitely channeling that movie today because they wore a lot of these styles of dresses with the very simple sleeves um, your hair down in the movie and I've always loved those styles and then just like last year I have these lace up shoes to round out the 1500 so I was definitely stressing last night because I had to literally finish doing some research on topics that I wanted to add to this year's lesson because I'm trying to make it um, more diverse and cover more things for various eras and I looked down and it was like <laughs> eight o'clock at night and I had not finished making the costume I wanted to wear so I just decided we were going to wear the same thing. I wasn't happy about wearing the same thing, but then I remembered you could remove the sleeves, and so we're all good. So tomorrow is all about 1800s Pride and Prejudice inspired, and I'm super excited because this is the first time I've gotten to wear it. So that's that. So today was day three of our fashion history unit, and today was the 1700s through the early 1800s. So last year I wore a 1700s middle class kind of working wear outfit. So this year I was able to finally make a 18 early 1800s empire waist gown that would be based off of like a camise style gown, a very loose flowy white linen or cotton gown today and I am definitely feeling all the Jane Austen vibes. Jane Austen is one of my favorite authors. I love her books. I literally watched any Jane Austen movie adaption multiple times and could easily watch them every day and never get tired of it. Um, so I'm loving this look today and I cannot wait to show it to you. All right, so here is today's look, a traditional white Camille's empire waist gown from the early 1800s. So I made this out of a very light gauzy fabric I'm wearing all authentic undergarments today. So we have a petticoat underneath this. We have our 1800 stockings with our lace up shoes. We're also wearing a, my mind is gonna go blank on what the very base undergarment is. We're also wearing a chemise, which is basically like an underslip, and then we're wearing Regency short stays underneath or on top of that, but underneath the full dress. So we're wearing stays today. They are actually super comfortable. That's one of the misconceptions about fashion history is that stays and corsets are very uncomfortable, and they weren't created to be uncomfortable. They were created to make the body look the shape that it should for the clothes, not to make you entirely um smaller um so short stays just go from about here to here so they're very wearable they're very comfortable because clothes were so loose in the early 1800s so this is the dress the top is all gathered it's gathered right here as well it actually has a drawstring here and at the top and then i put a little sash or ribbon on it because you see that a lot in the 1800s and I really love it because it just brings the whole look together with the yellow and then we have quarter sleeves which I really love our hair today is very much inspired by the 1800s my curls felt a little bit in the front but it still works definitely giving me all like the Jane Austen vibes and then the back if we can show it actually um 
is drawstring as well and then it ties at the top and the bottom so that's the back the back is also a lot more gathered than the front so that's the full look my shoes are shoes that I painted last year for my 1830s look um, so I painted them yellow and then they're lace-up shoes worn with stockings from American Duchess because we have to have historically accurate footwear for all of our historical fashions all right, so today is day four of fashion history. It's our next to our last day of our first week in this unit. So by tomorrow, we will be through the 1900s, which basically is all of the things that we started in BC time periods. So today was the mid 1800s to late 1800s. So it's about from 1830 to the 1890s since we're starting the 1900s tomorrow. So last year I wore an 1830s dress, which I love. And this year I busted out a dress that I made in high school to wear to a historical ball for the 1860s today, complete with a hoop skirt fabulous fall plaid so I'm gonna show it to you all right here she is in all of her glory complete with a hoop skirt that is not historically accurate it was totally bought offline but underneath you do not know <laughs> the dress itself is made from a uh, 1860s um, like reproduction inspired pattern so it's a fabulous plaid so I made this dress in high school probably junior year of high school so i used to go to all of these balls every year and the winter ball every year was a historical ball so one year i wore something from the early 1800s regency one year i made this to wear so i could dance in a hoop skirt and this fabric was a birthday present from my grandmother because i really wanted a satiny plaid i love plaids from the 1860s and how the dresses were made in them so that is what i got and it's just the most gorgeous thing ever it has all of these gathered details which are made out of a sheet i also sewed this dress with gold thread so it's super cool we have short sleeves only because they ran out of fabric to make the longer sleeves but short sleeves were still worn back then um it's completely lined in all this fanciness and then it closes in the front this is the back of the dress and then it's really not a dress it's a two-piece so then you have your skirt which buttons in the back and I have not been able to make an 1860s corset yet. I'm in the process of making that so maybe next time I wear this I will actually have proper undergarments. Um, and then this is the hoop skirt that we are wearing underneath it and then I also have this underneath to give a little definition in the back. We're wearing just these little lace up boots today and then my hair is left over from yesterday which saved me so much time this morning um so all i did was just took down the bottom half of my bun yesterday curled it and then put the little details embellishments in it and definitely fits for the 1860s so this was super fun i only wore the hoop skirt in my fashion design two classes because it's so big and my classroom only has so much walking space that it would not have been feasible in all my other classes but we did walk across the school to uh, pick up copies in this and there were definitely students who were saying things as I was passing them by um, but there were also a lot of students who said like oh my gosh I love your dress and in my mind I'm thinking do you know that I'm dressed as someone from the 1860s or do you just think that this is like my normal clothes because at this point my students already know I dress crazy so to them wearing like empire waist dresses from the early 1800s probably just look like my weird modern clothes wearing a hoop skirt and a plaid dress with a crazy hairstyle to them probably just looks like my fall fashion and not that i'm actually dressed as a character um so anyways that is today all swooshy this is why these are fun to dance in because you can just like go around a ballroom and it's super fun tomorrow is the 1920s so today is day, what is this, day five of fashion history. Today we're going to be covering the early 1900s. I think we're going to be 1900s up until 1920s, which means we're going to have to extend this into next week. So maybe I'll add some 1950s or 40s looks. But today we are dressed in the 1920s. The dress that I'm wearing today I didn't actually make. I got it at a thrift store probably like a year ago. But it looks like it's straight from the 20s. However, I'm pretty sure it's from the 1980s um, because the 1980s actually did have a lot of like weird drop waist things like the 20s. Um, so yeah. All right, here's today's look. So this is the dress. I'm wearing this like long sweater over it because it's a little chilly, but they did wear long sweaters back then. So these are the embellishments on the top of it. It has a dropped waist. It actually has pockets. This is my hair today. We got our necklace. We have our shoes, which are reminiscent somewhat of 
1920s so today is super comfortable um i really just love the styles of the 1920s they're very unique and interesting in all like the neutral colors that they would wear just always look so crisp and so clean Okay, so I thought last week was going to be my last week teaching fashion history, but that's not the case because we didn't get to finish the 1900s. We ended with the 1920s. So we're extending it into this week, which means we have a second week of teaching fashion history and why not take advantage of dressing up in 1900s fashion every single day because I love 1900s fashion as well. Honestly, in high school and college, I looked like someone from the 1940s and 50s nearly every day kind of like how I look today. So it's kind of reminiscent of my old style. Um, so today we covered the 1930s and the 1940s. And so I went with a very kind of modern 1940s look. It's still very much what they would have worn in the 1940s, but it was a lot more, I guess, out there because it has to do with pants. Um, and also none of the pieces I'm wearing are vintage and I did not make them based on a 1940s look. Um, they are retro inspired and pieces that fit the silhouettes for that time period. <laughs> also, my hair is crazy bright today because I recently redyed it. It was getting way too blonde and I had to use a different hair dye. And so it's crazy red. Honestly, in the camera, it looks good because it looks more orange. But every time I look at it in the mirror, it looks very, very red and it's just a little much. So I need it to tone down a bit. But um, today, obviously, you can tell we are wearing some victory rolls, which I have not done my hair in in like four years. And it's super fun. So let's take a look at the outfit. Okay, so this is the outfit we are wearing today. Like I said, it's a more modern take on 1940s because it is pants. And the 1940s is when women started to wear pants more mainstream. Um, so obviously the whole look definitely still looks like it's from the 1940s, but it's not as obvious as like a suit or a dress they would have worn. So I'm wearing a sweater vest, which I used to wear all the time in high school um, with like wool skirts for a very vintage feel. And then these high-waisted loose trouser pants with these button details so these are an old pair of pants from mod from mod cloth that i absolutely love they're definitely based off of 1940s 1950s vintage pants um so i thought they would be perfect for today and very comfortable and i'm just wearing these like white keds because little lace-up um sneakers were definitely worn in the 1940s and i didn't feel like wearing heels which would have been really great with this the thing that pulls it all together and it really makes it look historically accurate for the 1940s is my hair. I know I wanted to do something very, very 1940s. And so we went with victory rolls, um, two on this side, one on this side. And then in the back, I was going to do um, a scarf all over my head, but it just didn't look good. So we just wrapped a scarf around my bun to still kind of give that effect. Like that. So I'm honestly loving the victory rolls like they're so fun i forgot how much i love them um funny thing is that in college i literally dress up 1940s 1950s nearly every day i wore victory rolls and pin curls a lot um so i always looked like someone who was a time traveler um in college but that was who i was and my style has just evolved and changed so much over the years i still love vintage but i feel like it doesn't express my personality quite as much as the crazy outfits that i wear so this is the full look today for 1940s and tomorrow we're doing 50s and 60s so I haven't decided which look I'm gonna go with because they're both two that I really really love but maybe 1960s um okay so today is Wednesday it is our seventh day in our sixth second week gosh that's so confusing oh my goodness it's our seventh day of studying fashion history um and today is week two of studying fashion history because we didn't get to finish the 1900s last week so Yesterday we did the 30s and 40s. Today we did the 50s and the 60s, which was honestly like super long. So much was changing in fashion. Like finally in the 60s we get menswear finally changing after them wearing like suits for 150 years. And it finally gets exciting. We also get tons more different kinds of fabrics and then people just start to approach fashion from a personal expression standpoint. Um, so much was happening in the world and in society um, that was really changing people's mindsets towards just life, lifestyles, living, and therefore fashion and so really the 1960s fashion takes off and changes like so exponentially much so today we dress as the 1960s because i love um the styles of the 1960s i also just love the 1950s really love all eras of history so today we're in the 60s because i actually had 1960s pieces in my closet for fall um that i didn't have to go into storage to get so here's what i wore. Right, so here's today's 1960s look head to toe we have a poofy hairstyle with the bow in the back 
half up half down very popular in the 1960s we have these ankle cream ankle boots that are from everlane these aren't actually vintage but my sweater and my dress are 1960s vintage so this dress i found at goodwill i think two or three years ago um it is a vintage 1960s dress and it's polyester but what i learned about adding stuff to my um students lesson for the 1960s and 50s is that there were obviously all different kinds of man-made um fibers all your different polyesters um polymides um petrochemicals and things like that which is a lot of um your made made lab based um non-natural fiber fabrics and so there's one made from polyester that was called crimpling um and i believe 99 percent that this dress is crimpling and i never knew that until i was doing the research for um the lesson crimpling was a polyester fabric that had a lot of structure to it it was a lot more stretchy it had um, a really good wash and wear quality it didn't really wrinkle and so a lot of dresses from the 60s are made in that which is also why a lot of 1960s fashion has lasted so much longer than all of the other past decades with fashion because it was made out of fabrics that literally cannot biodegrade um unlike fabrics in kind of the 50s and a lot of the 40s and 30s ones so anyways that is my dress today and then i'm wearing this little uh cream 1960s sweater over it then we have my earrings and then my hair is super cute it's a little poof i could have definitely gone a whole lot bigger and then this bow in the back um because they definitely love their half up half down for the 1960s so all in all it's super cute and fun i oftentimes find myself leaning more towards the 60s and the 70s in the middle of the fall so i wear a lot more vintage kinds of styles or vintage inspiration looks in the fall time rather than the spring and so that's why this was available in my closet right now tomorrow we're doing the 70s and 80s and i'm thinking that i'm going to lump the 90s into it because the 90s shouldn't be too too long and honestly my kids already know so much about the 90s because they love 90s and 2000s fashion and so tomorrow i'm pretty sure i'm going to dress as the 70s because i honestly hate 80s fashion but i have some good 80s dresses so i was thinking that we could do something just funky 80s and just truly embrace it so we'll see what we end up going with 70s or 80s all right, so today I think at this point is like day eight of studying fashion history and fashion design too. Usually I, the past few years I've crammed it into one week, but this year I didn't want to rush through it. Um, and last week I wanted to wear a different outfit every day that actually fit the time period I was teaching on. So it extended into this week. So now we're dressing for the 1900s every single day. Um, and so today was the 1970s and 1980s. I almost dressed in the 1980s and I said that I was going to do that yesterday but then I went into my closet and I was looking through all of my collections of clothing and I remembered this dress that I'm wearing today that's this fun kind of like bohemian style dress that I found at Goodwill like a year or so ago straight up from the 70s someone probably made it at home because everyone was making things at home in the 70s um, and I thought it was perfect for the 70s today plus I very much prefer the 70s over the 80s. Honestly, the 70s in many ways is kind of my vibe for the fall. Um, I always say I detest 80s fashion because I legitimately do. There were so many dreadful things about 80s fashion. 80s fashion for 2021, a whole lot more doable. Like I have at least four dresses in my wardrobe right now that are straight up from the 80s, 80s brands, very much 80s styles, but I remove all the shoulder pads from it and I style them in ways that actually fit 2021 very well. Um, so anyways, that was my tangent. Let's go on to see the outfit I'm wearing today. All right, so here is today's outfit. So we have this dress, um, which is all gathered up here, gathered high waist, this florally skirt. So very much the bohemian style. Whenever I got this dress, it actually came with like this short cropped navy um, little vest. That's honestly super cute, but it kind of looks like a vest you would like perform like a tap dance in um and i thought this crocheted vest definitely fit it a whole lot better plus you know crocheted things everyone was wearing that in the 70s especially if you're going for like a boho style so that's what i went with today um and i honestly love this dress it's very cute however usually when i wear this look because i've worn it to school before i actually wore it on like a 1970s theme day that we had because when i dress 1970s for school dress up days we are not going to dress halloween 1970s we are going to dress straight up like we just came out of the 70s 1970s i usually wear it with these brown suede ankle boots that i have because the brown suede definitely fits the bohemian style a whole lot better 
could not find them in my wardrobe to save my life. I literally have no clue where they went. I must have gotten rid of them, um, but I recently got these kind of high ankle boots off of Poshmark. They look like this. They have a seam up the middle, and so to me, they're very much like a go-go boot style, but without being fully go-go boot. So here's my idea, is that though that boot style would have been very popular in the 70s, um, early 70s at least, even though it didn't fit the aesthetic of Bohemian. So we're just mixing aesthetics at this point. Um, and so that's why we're wearing these boots today. Honestly, they don't fit as well as I would have liked. Having like high or like knee length um, brown boots would have looked really great as well, but I didn't have those. So we're mixing things together here today, but at least the vest and the dress are actually 1970s. Um, and then we have our hair parted down the middle, curly, which is honestly how I wear my hair most days, but in the 70s, most people wear their hair parted down the middle, either straight or curly, um, or maybe, you know, kind of wavy, um, but I went with curly today, even though my hair is legitimately right now two different shades, because I recently dyed it, and the dye did not evenly dye, so we have just like an ombre effect. <laughs> um, so far, all my kids have said that they liked it, so I'm just gonna, at least for now, embrace that it's what it's supposed to be. So, that's our 1970s look for today. Tomorrow we are doing the 1990s and 2000s, um, which my kids are all about because they literally look like they stepped out of grunge era 90s and, you know, the 2000s style, which they call Y2K. Their 2000s style is a whole lot better than original 2000s style because original 2000s style was honestly worse than the 80s. And sometimes I think I would take 90s fashion over 80s fashion and over 2000s fashion. So tomorrow, I think we're gonna go with like a 90s grunge look, so either like a slip dress layered over a top with Doc Martens, um, or maybe jeans with Docs. Haven't decided yet, but we're definitely gonna do something kind of grungy with my pop of red hair. All right, we have arrived at the last day of our fashion history unit. So, what? Time period am I wearing today? The 1990s. Today we cover the 1990s and 2000s, which honestly I always say that I detest the 90s and 2000s when it comes to fashion. But honestly, I detest the 80s more because there were just so many bad things about 80s fashion. Um, 90s, I can deal with. There were some good things and 90s reimagined in 2021. It works. 2000s, I just really don't get, probably because of the low-waisted jeans. Like, I'll totally ixnate them simply because of that one fact. Um, and so today we're wearing the 90s, which I realized that so many of my outfits that I've worn to teach over this last year, honestly, are very reminiscent of the 90s fashion. And that's honestly because so many of my students wear 90s fashion. I mean, my kids are like all into the 90s and 2000s. And so I think that their outfits are always super cool. And last year I literally bought a pair of Doc Martin boots because my students made them look so cool. And now they're one of my favorite pairs of shoes and I love to style them with all different things. So that's what we're wearing today with a slip dress over a t-shirt and a flannel. So we're kind of mixing the two aesthetics of grunge and then the feminine slip dress aesthetic of the 90s. And honestly, I have worn this exact outfit to school before minus the flannel shirt. So apparently I kind of have to say I like the 90s now. All right, so here's today's look. Honestly, I'm really liking this. Um, like I said, I always really say I don't like the 90s fashion, but like there's something kind of cool about grunge and also cool about the feminine uh, slip dresses of the 90s, which is why I love to wear this dress, honestly, and I've worn it with Doc Martens to school before. Uh, so today I just paired the flannel over it, one, because my classroom is super cold, and two, because I wanted to get like the whole 90s effect. So I definitely look like I came from the 90s. Also, I was born in 1995 so you know i kind of am a 90s baby um and so makeup wise i went with this like dark purpley lipstick to kind of fit the whole grunge theme and then i put my hair in a clip um which clips are back in 2021 so honestly i was telling my students today 80s fashion in many ways is back and 90s fashion specifically and 2000s also in the 90s as when we get people starting to get really into secondhand clothing vintage clothing and thrift stores which is all the rage right now and if you look at any bun and gen z for the most part a lot of them look like they are drawing from 90s and 2000s style so it's kind of back which makes sense because in the fashion life cycle styles usually come back every 20 years in full force and if you look at the 90s and 2000s compared to 2021 it's been about 20 years so, we got our hair clip, we got our makeup, we got our slip dress, 
flannel shirt, Doc Martens. What a whole 90s vibe. Um, so yeah, I guess I have to say I like the 90s now, but probably would never do the 2000s. Um, just because as a whole outfit, it was bad. Parts of the 2000s, not bad by themselves. So those were all of my costumes for fashion history. A little bit of time traveling, which is always great. I always say that I wish time travel was a real thing because I would 100% go back to many of those eras and decades of time to just see what life was like. Um, but also I always say that I just really want to live in the 1800s because <laughs> I feel like it fits my personality and views on life so much more than modern the modern world. But I hope that you enjoyed seeing a little bit of the behind the scenes of my everyday weekly life as a high school fashion design teacher. Um, but also with a little bit of fashion and history sprinkled in since that is what I love to share here on my channel So I hope you enjoyed that if you have any questions about any of the costumes or the days or about fashion history drop them down Drop them down in the comments below um, and I would love to answer those for y'all So hopefully I will be a little bit more frequent here on this channel, but we shall see I'm not gonna make any promises because I feel like if I promise to put out content It's not going to happen, but I will say I am very consistent over on TikTok. So if you want to check out my videos there I'm gonna link it down in my description of this video I actually put out daily videos of all of my outfits for my fashion history unit talking about them. Um, I share behind the scenes content of my classroom and my life as a high school fashion design teacher. Um, and then I also just push out to different like outfits of the day, um, fashion and style content. So if you want to keep up with all my sewing and fashion stuff, TikTok is definitely the place to go because I usually post on there at least one or two times a week. Um, so I'm a lot more consistent on there than I am here on YouTube. So Hopefully that will change in the future, but as of now, um, this is my place to share my love for fashion and style and creativity and sewing whenever I get the chance. So thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked what you saw or you were inspired. And if you are not subscribed to my channel, subscribe so that you can stay up to date with the videos that hopefully I will be pushing out um, more frequently in the future. So thank you so much for watching. See you later.